Hey guys, so Bro of G and Reviews here with an event guide for the Prison Tower event. Unlike other events, this one is not going to have an event shop or anything. This is more just like a series of challenge quests. There are going to be seven challenge quests, and I'm going to go into detail into each one, explaining what kind of enemies you should expect, what kind of team you should bring for the quest, what kind of drops you can get from the quest, and all of that. It's going to be a very in-depth guide. So naturally, spoilers ahead. If you want to be surprised by it all and you don't want an in-depth strategy on what enemies you're going to fight and what you're going to run into, then then just ignore this guy. But before that, I do want to mention a couple of general things. So there are going to be seven challenge quests, one per day. Every day there's going to be a new quest, and they're going to remain until the end of the event, so you don't have to complete them every day. You can just do them all at the end. In order to participate in the event, you have to clear London, so that is mandatory. You must clear London. And I have to stress that these are not for beginners. This is not a beginner-friendly event. I recommend at least having a party of level 70s at the bare minimum, and even then you're probably going to struggle a bit. So your team comp should be anywhere between level 70 and 80. Again, not for beginners. And if you think you can circumvent that by having a strong support, unfortunately, there are no supports for this event. Edmund Dantes is going to be forced into your party for all the fights, except for the last one against himself. But for every other fight, you're on your own using your own servants plus Dante's as a support. And if you complete all the quests, you'll be rewarded with six tickets, one for each quest, and a crystallized lore for completing the last one. So let's get right into it and talk about the first quest. So naturally, these quests are going to get more difficult as time goes on. The first quest, in my opinion, is one of the easier ones. You're going to lead off against three skeletons, all lancer types, then a pair of archer skeletons and a caster Mephistopheles. And finally, the third wave is two saber skeletons and a phantom of the opera. So you can notice right away there's going to be a mix of different enemy classes. All of the quests are going to be like that. There's going to be a bunch of different enemy classes. So you can't just stack your team with all sabers or all archers. You're going to have to really diversify with these teams. In this particular case, I do suggest bringing a Berserker to deal with Mephistopheles. Since a Rider is going to be a waste against Phantom, if you don't have a good Berserker, then wear a plug suit Mystic Code and swap your rider out after they kill Mephistopheles. In addition, Phantom of the Opera also has a skill that reduces the quick card effectiveness of all enemies by 40% for 5 turns and it stacks. So don't bring any quick servants, they'll be completely ineffective against Phantom of the Opera. Instead what I do suggest is bringing offensive casters, so Waver, Media, Liz, Babbage, Nursery Rhyme or Tamamo. They're going to be your strongest damage dealers against Phantom of the Opera. In addition, you're going to also want to bring a strong Berserker. So Lubu, Herc, Beowulf, Vlad, Kentoki, Kyohime, you know the drill. Bring a good Berserker and bring some good casters and that's going to be your best bet for fighting off the first challenge quest. And ideally your best Mystic Code I recommend is the battle suit because casters need an extra buff due to their low damage output and it helps with stacking buffs on a berserker. And if you win, you'll be gifted with one void dust, a bunch of evil bones, and a assassin monument as well as a ticket. Moving on to the second quest. The second quest is another one that's on the easier side of things. It's still difficult, but easier compared to the rest of them. You're going to be leading off against two chimeras that are assassins, a caster demon in the second wave, and then you're going to face off against Fergus with 200,000 HP and a berserker chimera. Don't worry about the assassins in wave one because they're weak, so just bring a rider to deal with the demon. And you're also going to need some strong archers to kill Fergus as soon as possible because he's a bigger threat than the Chimera. Fergus can charge his Noble Phantasm by one, and if he gets his Noble Phantasm off because it's AoE, he could potentially just kill your party. So you absolutely need to focus on him and just dump as much damage on him as possible while trying not to get burst down by the Chimera. He has an evasion, so it can be a little bit difficult to do this, but archers like Uriel and Orion are perfect because they can take out Fergus in a single hit with enough buffs thanks to their anti-mail. And if you don't have them, Robin Hood and Gil are absolutely fantastic as well, as are Ushi, Medusa, Drake, and 
and Santa Altar for taking out the demon. And they can also deal some damage against the Chimera. Not too much to say here, just get rid of the demon in the second wave and then focus down Fergus. The ideal mystic code that I recommend for this is the Mage Association to charge your Noble Phantasm faster and to heal up the inevitable damage you're going to be taking from that Chimera. Or you can use the Battle Suit if you want to stun Fergus to prevent his Noble Phantasm for an extra turn. And when you win, you'll be given three talents, one heart, and one saber monument along with your ticket. Now moving on to the third quest and where things start to heat up. So the third quest is where it starts getting difficult in my opinion. First off, you're going to be leading up against three Berserkers, which isn't too much, but the second wave has a 125,000 HP Crystal Golem Berserker, which can do a lot of damage before the third fight, in which you'll be fighting Gael de Rey and two demons, one an assassin demon and one a rider demon. You can bring any class you want to deal with the berserkers in the first two waves, but you do need a strong rider to deal with Giles, and you're going to want to avoid using your noble phantasm on the crystal golem. Use everything you have on Giles. I recommend a front line of at least two riders and a caster or ruler to help you survive and charge your noble phantasm, and keep a couple of strong berserkers in your back line to come and sweep up the demons after you kill Giles, or have a Berserker, an Assassin, and a Caster, because the Assassin Demon is definitely going to chew apart any Riders that you take with you to deal with Giles. And the reason I say dump all your Noble Phantasm on Giles and don't use it on the Crystal Golem is because Giles has an ability that reduces your entire party's Noble Phantasm gauge by 20%, meaning it's going to be very hard to charge your Noble Phantasm against this guy. You're going to want to bring it with you into that round and use it before you can get that skill off. And this can be very easy or very tough, depending on how well you take care of that Crystal Golem in the second round. If you're able to kill him without him doing too much damage to your party, you shouldn't have any trouble against Giles and the rest of his team. I do recommend bringing Ushi for this because she can increase the Noble Phantasm gain of your whole party and deal some serious damage with her Noble Phantasm. Medusa, Drake, and Mary and Santa Altar are also good choices for this. And a strong Berserker like Lubu, Kyohime, Beowulf, Herc, Kentucky, Vlad, Lancelot, you know the deal. They can stay in your back row and come out to sweep after your rider might be killed by one of the demons. And it doesn't hurt to have a caster like Waver, Media Lily, or Hans to further heal and buff your team. And the best mystic code you can bring for this is the Mage Association one to charge your Noble Phantasm. It can really make up for that 20% drop that Giles can give. And the heal on it will heal up some of the damage you'll be taking from that Assassin Demon and the Berserker. You can also use Atlas if you want, but I do think Mage Association is a little bit better for this fight. And when you win it, you'll be gifted four Octuplet Crystals, two Demon Hearts, and a Caster Monument along with your summoning ticket. Now on to the fourth round. The fourth challenge is one of the harder ones in my opinion. You're going to be up against three French soldiers that are all Lancers. In the second round you're going to be facing two Saber Soldiers and a Marie Antoinette Shadow Servant. And then in the last round you're going to be facing Saber Giles, John, and a French soldier. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to bring a powerful assassin like Jack, Carmilla, or Shiki to deal with Marie, but also consider bringing someone with an invincibility pierce like Drake. And remember, Dante's also has invincibility pierce. This comes in handy against John. And of course, you're also going to need some very powerful archers. Don't worry about the Lancers in wave one. They're pretty weak. A strong AoE archer like Gil, Emiya, Arjuna, and especially Tesla with his invincibility pierce are the perfect choices for taking out Giles and the French soldier. And then you just rely on your Dantes to take out John and keep a Berserker or two in your back row like always just to sweep in case they're necessary. Focus on Giles first because he can charge everyone's Noble Phantasm, leading to them Noble Phantasming very easily. And the soldier can also taunt, so be very wary of that. For example, you can cast Taunt on one of your Berserkers and everyone will focus that Berserker. Using a strong AoE Archer, you can potentially take out both Giles and the French soldier simultaneously, but anti-male archers like Uriel and Orion or any high damage single target archers like Robin Hood are also really strong choices and you're going to want to keep Dante safe so he can deal with John on his own and the usual berserkers kill he made Lubu, Hercules, Vlad, Kentucky in the back row in case anything goes wrong they can come out and clean up and I recommend using the battle suit for this one because it allows you to swap out a delicate target if a French soldier casts Taunt on you, for example, if they cast Taunt on Dante's, I would recommend swapping him out to avoid him getting killed. And if you win, you'll be gifted with a bunch of Heroes Proof, 5 4-star experience, 
two Void Dust, and a Saber Monument, as well as a Summoning Ticket. The fifth challenge quest is another pretty difficult one. You'll be facing against two Lancer Homunculi, two Assassin Killing Dolls with a Lancer Homunculus, and then finally you'll face two Proto Homunculus Lancers with Caligula. Having a strong Saber will make this fight a lot easier, so Okita, Nero, Mordred, Altera, Alter, and even Saber Shiki provided you can get your instant death off with those homunculi in the final wave are perfect for this. And a support caster like Hans, Waver, Tamamo, and Media Lily also help a ton because you'll be taking a lot of damage from Caligula and they can deal with the assassin enemies on top of it. Do not bring a ruler, Caligula will slaughter them and pretty much everyone else. Caligula can increase his crit rate by 80% basically assuring he's always going to crit you, and he can do about 10,000 damage per crit, so he can easily Oko a servant of yours with this, and even kill a max level John in 2 hits with it. The homunculi can also heal for about 6,000, but you're really going to want to be on the lookout for Caligula, especially if he starts buffing his own attack with Sadis and Imperial Privilege. He can do some absolutely monstrous damage to you. That's going to be exactly why you're going to want to save your Noble Phantasm for him and kill him ASAP, just focus all your damage onto Caligula, and Servants with a dodge or an invincibility really help a lot for this, and healing isn't going to be as effective as you would think, because a lot of the time Caligula will one-shot you, and there is nothing to heal there, you're just going to die. Instead of focusing on healing, focus on stalling. You're going to want to stun him as much as possible, charm him, stun him, use evade, use invincibility, do whatever it takes to get him to not hit anyone. Of all the sabers, I especially recommend Okita because of her evade. It can buy you an extra turn, which can make all the difference. And of course, her strong single target Noble Phantasm could do a big chunk of damage to him. So make sure you pay your saber with a good caster and put any strong single target servant in your back row, whether those are berserkers or lancers like Ku or anyone. Your main target is going to be killing Caligula and thankfully he's a berserker so he's weak to everything. I do recommend using Atlas for this fight because of the invincibility or you can go with the battle suit if you just want to stun Caligula one more turn. This is definitely one of the hardest challenges in my opinion but you do get rewarded with two ancient gears, five homunculus babies, a berserker monument and of course a summoning ticket for your troubles. For the sixth quest you're going to be facing off against three caster wyverns, a wyvern origin in the second round who's a rider with 200,000 HP, and then finally in the last round you're going to be facing off against both rulers, Amaka Sashiro and Jean d'Arc. First things first, bring Assassin Shiki with you to kill the wyvern origin because he can cast invincibility on himself which can get very annoying very quickly, but from what I've heard he is susceptible to instant death so it's worth trying out. And in either case, Assassin Shiki is going to be your best bet in fighting him anyway because she's going to do the most damage of probably any assassin outside of Jack. For the final fight, you need your support Dantes to stay alive and do as much damage as possible since he's your best bet against both rulers. There's no special buffs that Amakusa or John get this time outside of their normal skills, but remember Amakusa will remove any dodge or evade you have and hit through it so you have no way of dodging his Noble Phantasm at all. You need to focus on Amakusa first and absolutely kill him before he gets his Noble Phantasm off because there's just no way to dodge it and it's going to kill your whole party. Jean on the other hand can wait because she has no offensive Noble Phantasm, all she's going to do is give herself invincibility. You're going to want to keep a healer or buffer support up front for Dante's and Shiki and a strong berserker or two or three in the back row because those are your only answers to the ruler class right now. And if you see a Magusa about to Noble Phantasm, swap Dante's to the back and immediately dodge it. Just like with the Fergus fight, you don't want Shiro using his Noble Phantasm, so make sure you utilize your stuns, your charms, your Noble Phantasm decreases, anything at your disposal to just stop him from Noble Phantasming while also doing as much damage to him as possible. And again, Dante's is key to this fight. If for whatever reason you do find your frontline dying, then do make sure you have a Lubu, Herc, Kyo, Lancelot, Fran, Vlad, Kentucky, whatever kind of berserker you have in the back row ready to come and clean up. And I recommend use the battle suit just so you can swap Dante's out in case of Shiro's Noble Phantasm. If you win, you're going to be gifted with 5 4 star experience cards, 4 dragon fangs, a heart of a foreign god, and a summoning ticket. And finally, the seventh challenge quest is a two-parter. The first section, you'll be facing off against two rounds of ghosts. 
Well, the first one will pit you against six ghosts, and then you'll be facing off against a colossal ghost with 450,000 HP. Every enemy is an assassin, so you can bring an all caster party with maybe a berserker or two in the back row. And offensive casters are going to be your best bet here, obviously, but bring support casters as well, like Media Lily, Waver, Hans. You're especially going to need a healing caster for this. Casters are very weak, so expect a very long battle and drawn out fight. And remember, the Colossal Ghost has AoE attacks. A healer is almost required for this fight just because you're going to be taking a lot of damage, even if you are resistant. And unlike the Cardinal Kyokai event, you can't use instant death against this ghost. It has less than a 1% chance of dying to instant death attacks, so don't even bother with it. All you can do is bring your strongest offensive casters like Liz, Babbage, and Media, and support them with really strong healers and buffers like Waver, Media, Lily, and Hans. And then the second part of the final quest is just a one-on-one -on -one fight against Edmund Dantes himself. He has no special skills or anything outside of his normal ones, but remember, adventures have no weaknesses except for Berserkers. So for this fight, you will need to make use of a Berserker supported by some really good casters that can buff and heal him. Vlad and Herc are the, probably the two best Berserkers you can bring for this. Herc due to his survivability and Vlad because of his arts team synergy. Remember, Dante's has Steel Determination, which grants him Invincibility Pierce and lets him hit through Evade and Invincibility. So if he activates it, you need to stop him from Noble Phantasming at all all costs with your Noble Phantasm charge decrease effects and stuns. Because if he gets off his Noble Phantasm while that skill is active, your whole party is going to die. Keep your Berserker healthy and alive while stalling out Dante's and healing back his damage and you'll be fine. You can use Uriel and Orion for this fight as well. Even if Dante's isn't weak to archers, their anti-male damage will still hurt him a lot. And in Uriel's case, she even has a Noble Phantasm Drain and two charms to further stall Dante's and potentially even stun lock him if she's in the same team with Tamamo and you're using the Atlas Mystic Code. Speaking of which, I do recommend using the Atlas Mystic Code because the invincibility and cooldown reduction are great for Herc, Uriel, and Vlad. Winning this final fight will reward you with 10 Void Dust, 6 Ghost Lantern, and a Crystallized Lore. And that's it. That's all there is to this quote-unquote event. It is just a series of 7 different challenge quests, so I hope that's not too disappointing for you all. These will be very challenging, and they can be pretty fun, depending on what team comp you're running, and if you want to give yourself a little extra incentive or challenge to beating these quests. Don't be afraid to use command seals or even quartz if necessary. The way I look at it is if you use one quartz to bring back your whole team and you get rewarded with a summoning ticket, well then you just trade in one quartz for one summoning ticket which is essentially worth three quartz. So it's a win. Or maybe that's just me doing mental gymnastics, who knows. In any case, I do wish you guys the best of luck for this event. And if you're rolling for Avenger, please do check out my Edmund Dante Spotlight. I'll link it in the description and on screen right now. And if you enjoyed this guide, please give it a like. And if you really enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. If you haven't already, please follow us on Twitter and join the party over on our Discord. And you can now find us on Twitch as well. All of that linked in the description below. But until next time, guys, this is Sobroni, signing out. Later.